All right. Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors. And as promised, when I did the full review of the X cover rooftop tent, you can click right here on the screen to go see that full review if you want to, or click the link in the description. I told you guys I might review the annex room, which is a zip on attachment to the front of this rooftop tent that allows for an expandable living quarters out here about the size of a small living room. Can't wait to show you this thing. It's quite awesome. Let's jump right into it. Now this thing does give you a large living quarters and it takes a little bit of setup, but it's fairly easy once you get a hold of the basics of how to do it. Right out of the gate though, I wanna say the material of this annex room is the same material on the outside rainfly of the tent. Very durable, very long lasting and waterproof, but it also has little awnings that come out that are usually the doors that you can stake out and tent pull out as well for more living space. And it has zip in mosquito netting. This thing's fairly heavy, but it's everything you need for the annex room setup. The poles, the guy lines, the annex room itself, everything's included in this bag. I definitely recommend though you get more stakes and more guy lines and also more tent poles because it allows you to utilize those awnings that are gonna extend out as well. All right, so in this bag, open it up. You have a bag that's got your stakes in it. It's got your guy lines in it. You can always add more stakes and more guy lines. I do recommend that you get more stakes and more guy lines just in case you lose one. Keep them in separate baggies. That way if you lose one bag, you're not up that creek without that paddle because without the stakes, without the guy lines, you can't exactly stake this thing out or use the annex room itself. So having a redundancy and protection to know that you can set up your annex room even if you lose one of these bags, it's important. You have some pretty thick stakes. These are the stakes that come from iCamper. You also have solid guy lines. Guy lines are used to pull a tent pole or another object taut. That way you can hold it up and keep it staked down properly or for tautness on a tent and a rain fly. You can use this for all sorts of stuff, but guy lines are very important and they come with these nice little tensioners. That way you can hook one end around a stake hook and then pull the other part taut and you're good to go. So it would be hooked around there and then you just shuffle this thing up and down and it allows you to tighten the guy lines. Or you can just run paracord and run trucker hitches off of a tent stake. And then this right here, ugh, is the actual annex room material. Now it's quite bulky, but I consider it carry-on. <laughs> if you don't know that movie, we can't be friends. This is the actual material itself for the annex room and it zips onto the front side of the X cover or the sky camp. This will work with both. I'm almost certain it can. I don't have a sky camp, but I'm almost certain this is the same annex room and the same zip system as a sky camp as well. Check with iCamper first if you do have the sky camp and you're trying to buy this annex room, but I'm pretty sure it's the same setup. All it is is just the zip function on the front side of the tent, and I'm almost certain that's identical. So let's set this to the side for right now, and I'll talk more about the details of that here in a second. I will state that the bag that carries it all isn't the toughest in the world. It already has little pinholes on the bottom of it, so a little downside in my opinion. I think the carrying bag that carries this much crap that's so important should be a little tougher. Um, it's already got holes in it just from setting it on the ground and on rocks occasionally. Uh, it's I haven't been babying it, but at the same time, coming and going out of a vehicle, you want to have a tough carrying bag because if this goes to hell in a hand basket, your gear is going to be spread out all over the place, or you're going to be losing potentially stakes or guy lines like I was talking about, or even the tent poles eventually. You don't want to have that happen. These are the poles that you use. They are collapsible, obviously. Claps down like that. They have the elastic cordage that you'd find in tent poles, same setup and they snap into themselves like that. And then you have an adjustable tensioned expansion section on it that goes from 205 all the way up to, it looks to be 150. So you have some room for adjustment to go up and down as you're trying to find that height. Now, these are supposed to be adjusted to the same level as the front side of the rooftop tent. So you gotta find that height and then put these vertical and match that height with the rooftop tent, which we're gonna show you right now. This little screw on the side of these poles needs to be taut. Make sure to tighten that up quite a bit. That way this, when it's closed and clamped, like so, when pressure's pushed down on it from the guy lines, it's not slowly depressing over time like it is doing right now. All right, find your zipper side. Make sure to be somewhat careful on the ladder. You do have to be up on this thing while you're putting this thing on and make sure you're zipping it on the correct way or else you're gonna have to redo these steps. This thing's got a little bit of weight too, so you gotta be mindful of that. Don't fall off the ladder. That'd be something I definitely would do, but you have your one end of the zipper 
and that plugs into the female side of this zipper. The nice thing is to attach it is super easy. I am not great with zippers um, <laughs> at all. So to have this function quite easily is nice. It attaches very easily. And then obviously the uh, little awning sections of the rooftop tent are a great way to brace yourself. Don't rely completely on it for your weight because you'll, if it does come loose, you'll fall. But zip this up. You gotta kind of support the weight of the annex room. That is a downside and it's something to be mentioned. Maybe not a downside, but just a mentioned thing that support the weight of the annex room with one hand, like this, as you zipper. That way it keeps the weight off the ground and the zipper's not getting pulled in the reversed position while you're doing this. There you go. Zipping up the corner. All the way around and I'll see you in a second. Pull this zipper this way. I'll take that. Zip it around. You're good to go. This is on the rooftop tent. This is on the annex room. Take that Velcro there. Take the clip, clip it in. Take this backside around the ladder. And you have little lashing straps here that can latch onto the tent and hold everything down as well as on these eyelets underneath the rooftop tent. But you take this end and you feed it into the end of the zipper, very large zipper end. It's very simple to zip down. Take this clip, put that clip on there. Velcro goes there, Velcro goes there. That's nice and taut. And now the back side of your annex room, completely enclosing your ladder, is assembled and good to go. Now we just work on the tent poles. You have two sections to loop a guy line rope to, and I've already attached those to that. And the guy lines come out there. And on the other side, I got the other one. So you take your tent pole, you place it in the ground, and you adjust it to where that tent pole is now the height of the base and the end of this rooftop tent. So right about there. But as you go from place to place, the level surface is gonna be different. So this may not be as short or as high in another location due to the fact that ground might be at a different angle. So make sure to find that every time. That is a proper procedure that we have the direct line and the proper angle coming down to the front of the annex room. It's not always gonna be ideal and it's not always gonna be perfect. Uh, you gotta remember that this is not a commercial advertisement. It's not gonna show you with me drinking a you know, perfect cup of coffee with a perfectly made breakfast while this gets assembled miraculously in two seconds. No, it takes time and wherever you're at, it will change. You may not have loose enough dirt to even stake down the annex room, so you gotta keep that in mind and maybe bring some sandbags. That way you can lash the bottom of the annex room to the sandbags because you may not be able to stake it down. So when you're putting a tent stake in the ground, you should have it at a 45 degree angle facing back towards whatever tension you have. So because it's pulling this way, I wanna have the stake at a 45 degree angle this way. That way when the tension is pulling back, there's more resistance in the dirt. Don't put it straight down in the dirt. Everyone makes that mistake and it messes it up. Pull that nice and tight. Now, this is where it becomes really cool, is the base of the annex room it has all these loops where you put the tent stakes through to stake down the outside perimeter. But they also have little pull tensioners. Put down the tent stakes and then tighten these all up accordingly to make it the proper tension across the entire tent. I love it. And then you take this outer shell, which is waterproof. Once it's unzipped, and you can pull it out and you can take the extra poles you have, which is the same type of poles we use for the inside of the annex room, put them through these little eyelets here and then run guy lines off of those as well to have an awning right there. And you can do the side and the other side to have three full awnings on top of the living quarters. And then underneath this, you have your mosquito netting and you don't even have to put out the awning. You can just roll this up. Make sure to roll it inward, don't roll it the other way because then you have a section where the water can get trapped. You roll it this way, it gives you a tensioned top and everything's underneath. That way when the water does, or if it does come at all, will run off and not puddle up here. So roll underneath. And you have your hook. 
And then obviously you can unzip the mosquito netting and the mosquito netting will move and you can enter or exit on all three corners. So let's take the stakes and start staking this thing out to show you the full look. Beautiful. <laughs> that seems to be good. Take your tensioner, move it around. And all you're doing is you're pulling the slack off the line and then moving the tensioner up. That's how you use these, it's very simple. You're good to go with a little awning system. Now you can bring these higher up, lower if you want to. You can technically undo these and then raise them accordingly. There you go. That way you now have headspace to be under your awning. You can see out and then obviously more poles. You can do the side ones and you have three awnings in the interior section of this and you have access to your tent. I'm gonna be using this like crazy. That You'll see this in future videos here very shortly. Uh, I got a long, 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 long road trip coming up about three or four weeks long filming content for you guys. So I hope you appreciate the content, putting in a lot of time, got a lot of new gear I'm gonna be testing on this road trip, and then being able to show you these products with a better background. Ooh, an antelope. Yep, just an antelope. <laughs> they are delicious. Very long road trip coming up, and I'll be utilizing this quite often and seeing how well it does. I'll do a follow-up video maybe a year from now, especially if there's an issue, I wanna tell you guys about it. This road trip's gonna be three to four weeks long, so I'll be able to put this to the test quite a bit, but the road trip is mainly to give you better scenery and different scenery. Obviously this canyon's beautiful, but having the same background every time in every video gets kind of redundant, and I want you guys to have a great time watching the videos. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors. Time to uh, turn on the lights, get the stove going, cook some food, and get some sleep. I'll see you guys soon very, very soon. Later.